Hi, in this lecture, we'll talk about the policy model. So let's dive into that. So what are the benefits of policy driven model? So basically, instead of going with the configurations themselves, no, we abstract a control layer and then we have the hardware uh, underneath. So the first thing is abstraction that allows me for policy replication and makes scalability easier. What are we talking about here? Here we are talking about a policy layer that doesn't matter if I have 10 switches, 20 switches, 30 switches. As long as it knows about them, it's going to push the policy to implement. So scaling becomes much easier. So can the policy be replicated? That's what the policy model is all about. Extensibility. Extensibility is here more of a flexibility to change. So if you have changes uh, in requirements, then it can cater for that easily. Reuse. So the policy, when adding endpoints, when adding more servers, when adding switches, when adding, basically when scaling, then the same policy can be reused. Moreover, let's say I have configured some filters in the policy that should be implemented between such and such endpoints. I can reuse that again. You have implemented mapping, as we'll see later on, between servers and some features of the ACI. Then that again uh, can be reused elsewhere, which makes changes, additions much easier. Operations and development, as we discussed, the open APIs that opens the door for developers to, to have uh, more advancements and more tools to integrate southbound and northbound. But also here, um, remember that the policy now is saving a lot of time on the design and documentation and a lot of stuff that used to be done in the classical data center infrastructure, which could be directed into uh, development and enhancements as opposed to um, uh, low level designs and deployment uh, effort. Policy model. So this figure depicts how it works or, or the idea of abstraction. So I have a policy layer in ACI. This is as you are aware, the EPIC, the Application Programmable Infrastructure Controller. So the user or the administrator configures the policy on EPIC itself. Now EPIC is going to instruct the infrastructure that it knows about. How does it know about? There's a discovery process uh, when you power up everything that we'll talk about later on. So now it pushes that to the devices that it knows about, switches, routers, firewalls, whatever the devices are. And that layer is called the concrete layer or the hardware layer. So what does the concrete layer do? I mean, as long as they are pushing, then there has to be a communication language between them, if you agree with me. So it pushes that in a specific format agreed by the language or the protocol of communication between them. Now the concrete layer will take that and it will look into the policy. End state, what do you want exactly to do? Okay, imagine that you have um, an architect who is designing a building and a contractor that should implement that design. So they need to meet, they need to discuss, here's how I want it, here's the height of the ceilings, that's how the first floor uh, would look like, that's how the layout would be, this would be the finishing, the electrical wiring will run this way, the ducts and AC will run that way. So they need to agree. And that's what the policy is. And the policy here, if you want to map it to the, to the architect and, and uh, contractor example, is the actual um, engineering designs of how it needs to be implemented. So now the concrete layer takes that, the, con the contractor looks at that, discusses it with the policy layer, and if it's okay, then he gives a green light, everything is clear, we can do it. If there are things that cannot be done, he will go back and say, you know what? This cannot be implemented. The port is down. The port is already, you have a duplicate configuration on the same port that is being used now. Um, you are sending that policy to be configured on a port that is down. You are configuring parameters contradicting existing parameters that are operational now. So whatever the reasons are, then there is a feedback. There is a continuous con communication policy and then confirmation. Yes, it's done, thumbs up or no, it cannot be done, and why, what's the fault, or what's the problem with that? So the abstraction of policy and concrete layers. Concrete layer is the ACI fabric itself. So this is the leaf switches, and, and um, so these are the actual switches in the fabric. While the policy layer is the controllers, and that is the application programmable interface controller, and we'll talk uh, about that in a bit. 
Communication back and forth indicates how, the, how successful the policy deployment is. So there is always continuation of the communication. It, it doesn't make sense that the controller pushes the policy down and hears nothing and assumes that everything is cool and everything is working. Okay, so there has, so the communication has to be full duplex. So instantiation or rendering. I always the, the instantiation is a tricky word. You guys need to train on how to do it fast without uh, being confused. So this refers to the fact the, the the process of sending the policy down. When the concrete layer looks at it and now changes it or executes it into configuration on the devices, this is what we call instantiation or rendering. Basically, taking the policy and the end state in the policy form and transferring that or translating that into the configurations that sit on the switches themselves. So that's what we call the instance uh, instantiation. Characteristics of the policy driven model. The complete representation of the administrative and operational states of the system are done and maintained in software. So that's one thing. Now the policy itself is nothing but Software, I mean, you click, you, you configure through the GUI, or if you have an orchestration tool, you configure through APIs. And then the whole thing, the whole state of the uh, infrastructure that you have is now in software. Configuration changes are not done manually on the system, which is good news, and it gets us closer to what the cloud expects, that the human involvement is minimal. So changes to the policy, if you want to do any changes on the uh, uh, data center infrastructure, what you do is you go back to the policy, do the changes, push the policy down, and the changes get implemented, and then the fabric will, or the uh, concrete layer will send the acknowledgement up to the controller that everything is cool, or you know what, there are some troubles, and here's the reason. New devices connected to the system are not allowed to communicate with other devices until it is permitted to do so in the policy. So by default, ACI, if you connect a new device, it will not allow it to communicate with the existing devices. So by default, if you connect um, a device, it will not be able to communicate with the other devices until you configure the policy to allow it and define where it belongs, which group it should be part of, and then um, it will be able to communicate. Total separation between the logical and concrete entities in the system. So the policy layer is a logical layer and the concrete layer or the physical layer is where the actual switches are. Logical model rendering process and concrete model. So here is the logical model, which is the policy layer that we discussed. And there is a rendering process that happens on the fabric or on the actual switches, which transform or translate logical model, the policy, into concrete model and the concrete model is nothing but a copy that exists on each fabric switch so each fabric switch has a copy of what the end state would look like and then you have object oriented operating system on each device on each switch uh, in the aci and uh, the object oriented os is the one that takes the policy and looks at the or so basically here takes the uh, concrete model looks at the portion that has to do with itself and translates that into the actual configuration on the device. Okay, so if we, if we take it hierarchically again, we have the policy mo a model or the policy layer, which is a, a, a software configuration uh, of the end state on the controller. Through rendering process that gets translated into a concrete model and the concrete model exists on all the switches that you have in the dead center infrastructure. So basically think about everyone knows what the end state is, but then everyone has a function in that end state, not the complete thing. So the next step is the OS on each device, which is an object oriented uh, OS, takes on its own bit and translates that into a configuration on itself, on the device itself. So each switch will take its, then its own bit and translate that in the configuration on itself, which defines the, the part or the function that it has to do in the overall end state. Policy model and in theory, and we have, we have covered that uh, during our discussion, but let's go through it. Policy model refers to the fact that policy is configured on the controller, the EPIC, which will then relate to the fabric switches as a policy, intended end state. 
Fabric nodes, which are the actual switches, will receive and understand the desired end state. Then they will either. So that's the promise part of it. If, if there are no issues, it will implement it and then send a confirmation to the controller say, stating the same or send the feedback to the controller of the fact that the changes applying the policy desired in the state was not achieved and what was the error or what was the reason for that. So again, the communication back and forth, we call it the policy model. So we have abstracted the actual configuration or the policy from the hardware. And the promise theory is the concrete layer or the hardware layer will always send the feedback if the, everything was good or uh, problems happened.